Which murmur is this one? Is it the murmur of MS or MR or maybe AS or AR? Or it can be ASD or VSD or maybe HOCM. And you keep on thinking and guessing in your brain. And then next step comes is you think upon calling up your senior or consultant. And the last escape would be to just get our two-day code done. But now we need to know about the heart murmurs, right? We need to auscultate the heart. And obviously, this is very, very important for our clinical practice, for our day-to-day -day clinical practice and also for OSCE examination. And in this video, I'll try to simplify everything about the heart murmurs, the concept behind heart murmurs and also how are they being heard, right? So I'll, I'll play some of the murmur sound. And then at the last of this video, I have kept two questions in which you need to identify which murmur are we talking about? So let's get started. Now, before diving into the murmurs, we need to know the basic physiology or the cardiac cycle. Now, in this illustration, you can see the blood is flowing passively from atria to ventricles. And then the atria contract and pushes all the leftover blood from the atria to the ventricle and now is the time when your ventricle goes into contraction state or what we call as systole or systole now at this time when it it is about to start the ventricle is about to start to contract what happens is there's closure of your mitral valve as well as tricuspid valve and hence giving you the sound of what we call as s1 or the first heart sound now as this ventricle keeps on contracting and pushing the blood from the left ventricle to the aorta and from right ventricle to pulmonary artery. Now, once it has finished, what happens is the closure of aortic valve and pulmonic valve. And hence, we get a second heart sound, which we call it as S2. Now, let's hear how S1 and S2 are heard. You can also know more about these sounds S1, S2, S3, S4 in my another video. I have given the link over here as well as I'll put the link in the description box below. Now, if we talk about the murmur, it is just what we call it as turbulence of blood. If it occurs outside the heart, we call it as brui. If it occurs inside the heart, we term it as murmur. Now, if the, this abnormal sound of turbulence, it happens once the mitral valve or a tricuspid valve has closed, that means after S1 sound, if it occurs, then we call it as systolic murmur. Why? Because this is the time when ventricle is in the systole phase. So if we call it as systolic murmur, that means systole means over here as ventricular systole. Do not confuse with atrial. Many, many people, many doctors, they keep on getting confused. What do you mean by systolic? So systolic means ventricular systole. And once your S2 is there, that means there is a closure of your aortic and pulmonic valve. After that, if abnormal sound is coming, that is termed as diastolic sound or diastolic murmur. And if the, the, this abnormal sound is throughout the systole phase as well as diastole, it is termed as continuous murmur. So this is how we categorize uh, or classify the murmurs into systolic, diastolic and continuous. Now, when we talk about murmur, we need to define murmur with the help of girls. Yes, you heard it right, girls. This is just a mnemonic to remember, right? Whenever you are uh, mentioning a murmur or giving answer in your OSCE examination. Now, G stands for grading of the murmur. It is different for systolic and diastolic murmur. There are six grades for systolic murmur and four grades for diastolic. I'll not be going much in detail, right? I'll not confuse you. And we do. I, I suggest not to comment about the grading in your OSCE examinations until unless you are not very much sure about it. Second is I stands for intensity or the pitch. R stands for radiation of the murmur. L stands for location. Now, there are actually five locations where we need to auscultate. The first one is the aortic area, which is the second intercostal space just right uh, of the sternum. Second is pulmonic or a pulmonary area, 
which is second intercostal space left to your sternum. Then third is your tricuspid area, which is in the fourth intercostal space, which is again left to your sternum. And next is your mitral area or the apical area, which comes in the fifth intercostal space and the level of midclavicular line. These are the important four. Now, the fifth location is also added nowadays, which is called as herbs point or the neoaortic area. Right. So the, these are the locations. Now, coming back to the mnemonic of girls, we have covered till L. S stands for the shape of the murmur. So I'll describe everything about a murmur. I'll be defining. And also you will hear how these murmurs are heard. Now, if we talk about the systolic murmur, the first one, this is between S1 and S2. And if it appears throughout what we call it as pan-systolic or a holosystolic murmur. And this is how it is heard. Now we need to know in which cases there is a holosystolic murmur or a pan-systolic murmur and why. Now, whenever the ventricle is contracting, obviously it is pushing blood from the left ventricle to the aorta and from the right ventricle to the pulmonary artery. Now, if there is abnormal path available for the blood to escape, then obviously it will escape and that too with the abnormal sound. Right? Now, there can be three possibilities. One, the blood can go upside, right, into the atria. On the left side, into the left atria, onto the right side, into the right atria. Now, this is what we call it as mitral regurgitation or a tricuspid regurgitation. Also, there can be additional abnormal path, which is between the ventricles. And then that defect is called as ventricular septal defect. So if there is a VSD, obviously, whenever the ventricle goes into systole, the pressure on the left side, on the, on the left ventricle is higher than the right. And for sure, the blood from left ventricle will move towards the right ventricle, producing that abnormal sound. And that is throughout the systole and hence giving holosystolic or a pan-systolic murmur. So just listen this pan systolic murmur again. Now, if we talk about the mitral regurgitation murmur, first of all, it is high pitch. Second, it is blowing holosystolic murmur. Third, best heard at the apex or the mitral area. And fourth, very important point is it radiates to the axilla. So never miss auscultating the axilla if you are suspecting mitral regurgitation. Now, if you come to the second example of pan systolic is tricuspid regurgitation. It is also having high pitch and this is best heard at tricuspid area or a left lower sternal border. And the very important point about tricuspid regurgitation murmur, which differentiates from others, is it increases during inspiration. All the right sided murmurs, those increase with inspiration, whereas all on the left side that increase with expiration. And you can have a mnemonic as RILE, R-I-L-E. Right side murmurs, they increase with inspiration. Left side murmurs, they increase with expiration. Now, why does this happen? So whenever we inspire, we have a negative interthoracic pressure. And with that, what you get is more of preload to the right atria. So the more the blood pours into the right side, more is the sound of murmur, right? May it be the stenotic murmur, may it be the regurgitant murmur. Right? So right side murmurs always increase with inspiration. And for the tricuspid regurgitation murmur, if it increases with inspiration, this is called as Carvalho sign. Now the third example of pan systolic murmur is VSD or a ventricular septal defect. This is best heard at herbs point and smaller the VSD or the defect is, louder the murmur is. So this was all about the pan systolic murmur. Now if we talk about the other classification of systolic murmurs, Next comes are the mid-systolic murmurs. And this is how it is heard. Now, if we talk about the concept, we discussed about pan-systolic that uh, blood has the abnormal path to escape, right? Now, if the ventricle is contracting and the outlet is somewhat narrowed, 
or the orifice is narrowed as in case of your aortic stenosis or pulmonary stenosis or maybe HOCM that is hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. In all these three states what happens is the orifice is narrowed or the outlet is narrowed and hence what you get is mid systolic murmur. Now if I talk about first of all the aortic stenosis it is also high pitch and this is best heard at aortic area. This murmur radiates to the carotid again very very important point right so you need to always auscultate the carotid with the bill ideally with the bill and then if this radiates to the apex if the murmur is radiating let's say you have auscultated the aortic area it is radiating to the apical area also that is called as Galavarin's phenomena right again this is one of the mcq which can be asked in your examination or anyone can ask in your OSCE examination as well also if i talk about the shape of this murmur it is crescendo decrescendo now if i talk about the murmur of pulmonary stenosis it is almost similar to that of your aortic stenosis having high pitch obviously best heard at the pulmonary pulmonic area there is no radiation as like of aortic stenosis right and the shape is crescendo decrescendo now the third example of mid systolic murmurs are your hocm this is somewhat unique right so uh, again the pathology is there is the outlet obstruction right because of the septum hypertrophy and also there is a hypertrophy of the left ventricle now uh, the murmur is almost heard similar to that of aortic stenosis but the difference between the HOCA murmur and an aortic stenosis murmur is based on certain maneuvers. Now, if you uh, do the squatting maneuver, what happens is there is increase of afterload as well as there is increase of preload. With that, what happens is if uh, I talk about the aortic stenosis or aortic regurgitation or any other lesion, right? Mitral regurgitation, mitral stenosis, or maybe tricuspid regurgitation, tricuspid every other murmur that increases right because of the more preload more of the blood is coming to the heart so all the murmurs increase except for hocm now why what is the concept behind as there is more preload and there is increase of the afterload as well what happens is there is more blood in the left ventricle and this left ventricle it pushes the hypertrophied septum and hence creating more space or there is a relief of the obstruction at the outlet and hence the murmur decreases whenever there is more preload or more increased afterload. The opposite happens whenever a patient stands from a sleeping position or from sitting to stand. Again, every other murmur that decreases because preload has decreased whereas HOCA murmur that increases. And similar is the situation when a patient goes for a person performs Valsalva maneuver. Every other murmur that decrease because with Valsalva, what you do is during expiration and there is a closed glottis, so you are creating a pressure, right? You have created a pressure in your intrathoracic uh, cavity. Now with that, there is decrease of the preload. So all the murmurs may be MS, MR, AS, AR, TS, TR, PR, PS, every other murmur decreases but the murmur of HOCM and I'll talk about the other murmur which is MVP these are the two murmurs which increases right so just remember this this is how we differentiate aortic stenosis murmur from HOCM again before jumping on to the next one listen to this mid systolic murmur again now the third type of systolic murmur are the late systolic murmur and this is how it is heard. Now the example for the late systolic, the first one is ASD or atrial septal defect. And this happens, there is increased blood flow through the pulmonary valve during systole. Right. And what uh, the main important thing is there is wide and fixed splitting of S2. I have explained about the ASD and the splitting in my 
video which I mentioned earlier, which I talked, which I have talked about S1 and S2 heart sounds, right? The normal heart sounds. You can go and check that particular video. And the other example of late systolic murmur can be MVP, mitral valve prolapse. It typically have a click in the mid systole followed by a late systolic murmur. Now, this is this uh, type of murmur is also unique as like of HOCM. In this, what happens is when you have more of blood in the left ventricle or in the ventricle uh, cavity, what happens is it causes stretching of the cordate tendine and hence the murmur is decreased. So in a case where you have squatting, there is more of blood in your left ventricle. What happens is there is decrease of the murmur. And in the other scenarios, as in the case of standing or valsalva, what happens is there is increase of the murmur. I hope this is clear. And this is uh, quite frequently asked in the MCQs or the examinations. So systolic murmurs are of three types. One, pan-systolic. Second is mid-systolic. And third is late systolic. In pan-systolic, we have mitral regurgitation, trigaspid regurgitation, and ventricular septal defect. In mid-systolic, we have aortic stenosis, pulmonary stenosis, and HOCM. In late systolic, we have atrial septal defect and mitral valve prolapse. Now comes the diastolic murmurs, which we mentioned earlier that it comes after S2. And this is how it is heard. Now, if you talk about the diastolic murmurs, the first can be early diastolic murmur and the uh, examples for that is aortic regurgitation and pulmonary regurgitation. In aortic regurgitation, it is soft and ha having a high pitch. And this is best heard at the herbs point when the patient is sitting and leaning forwards. Very, very important. And also it has a decrescendo shape. Now, this uh, murmur, the diastolic uh, rumble, it can be heard at the apical area. Whenever there is a regurgitation jet and that actually touches the anterior mitral leaflet and causing it to vibrate and then it is called as Austin Flint murmur. Now, If you talk about pulmonary regurgitation murmur, it is also soft, high pitch, best heard at pulmonary area and having a decrescendo shape. This murmur increases with inspiration as we uh, discussed earlier and this Pulmonary regurgitation murmur is also called as Graham steel murmur. And before moving to the mid to late diastolic murmur, listen to the murmur of aortic regurgitation and pulmonary regurgitation again. Now, next come uh, is the mid to late diastolic murmur. And the main example is mitral stenosis. First of all, listen how it is being heard. Now this is a low pitch murmur and is a mid diastolic rumbling murmur. Also, there is a presence of opening snap and pre systolic accentuation. Also, this murmur is best heard obviously at the apical area or a mitral area. And the next important thing about mitral stenosis murmur is it radiates to axilla. So it is very essential to again auscultate axilla and to auscultate the mitral stenosis murmur the best thing would be ask the patient to have a lateral tilt and the better would be if you auscultate with the bell of your stethoscope and also in the axillary area as well again i would ask you to listen to this mitral stenosis murmur because this is important and very commonly seen now comes the last murmur which is the continuous murmur and it is present in PDA or a patent ductus arteriosus or a combination of systolic and diastolic murmur causes. And this is how it is being heard. Now in PDA, what you have is an abnormal connection between the aorta and the pulmonary artery. And throughout the cardiac cycle, there is flow of blood from the aorta 
to the pulmonary artery and hence it is continuous murmur or what we call it as machinery murmur but it increases or it get accentuated during the systole now in the last i have a mnemonic for you for all the important murmurs hard where h is silent ar is aortic regurgitation and this is a diastolic murmur as aortic stenosis is a systolic murmur misses or mrs mitral regurgitation is also a systolic murmur msd that is Mitral stenosis is a diastolic murmur. And this is all about the murmurs, the basic concept and why they are called as systolic or a diastolic or a continuous murmur. So I hope this was somewhat useful to you. Now I'll be asking two questions over here and I need answers in the comment section below.